they see everything that's being given to them, they decide to stay and they don't want to leave. Eventually, the money runs out. When the money runs out, these hotels will close. We also spoke to the manager of the store right next to Roe, who shared how the migrants have been affecting businesses in the area. So there was previously tourists staying in this hotel mm. and now it's migrants. So you're not having the same amount of business coming through this area. No, same, yes, it's totally down. Less than 50% the down. So wow, this dude lost 50% of his business. This negatively affects business owners who are directly on, I mean, in these areas, who are right there in this, these areas, who depend on the dollars of tourists. People who are coming there from from all over the world who paid to come there, who are coming there to have a good time, and they want to leave with something that shows that their trip was was fun. <laughs> uh, I'm not against, I told you I'm not against them, but I don't like to our business area. Take take them another area, side of city or another place, not the middle of the city. We are facing, but we are the business, with the, not only my store, all area business is down for this one. Oh. Build a silo for them. This is my two pennies. I think it will work. I think it will work. There should be an immigration silo somewhere in a rural community, somewhere. For if, if for those people who feel like we want to take care of immigrants, hey, cool. Send them to the silo. Send them to the silo. Let them live in the silo. Only in the silo. This is their world outside of their world. Then once they take all of the classes and the courses and, and they do every single thing that they have to do in the silo, then they can be um, they can be American citizens once they get out. Other than that, they stay inside of the silo. See, I watch too much Netflix. <laughs> I watch too much TV shows. But think about this. If you are going to take monies and put it toward taking care of um, illegal immigrants, right? Do it in a way that it does not negatively affect American citizens, okay? Don't put them in a city where they are taking up hotel rooms and, and, and all this space on the, on the sidewalks. Like, imagine working in, in, um, living in New York or being a tourist in New York, and you are just walking through the, through the sidewalks trying to go from point A to point B, Go to a nice play, go get something to eat, go to a movie, um, go shopping. Um, you're just walking around just to take in the beautiful New York air, you know, that 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 scenery. And you got to walk through hundreds and thousands of freaking illegal immigrants who are just out there doing whatever the hell they want to do. Nobody wants that. Put their ass in a silo. Put them in an Im Im immigration silo. I know any, nobody ever put that information out there before, but I vote for an immigration silo. All of what is this area, 8th Avenue, 3, 4 area, they are busy. You can ask any people, they'll say no business is down here. On top of the violence, guns, and drug and alcohol abuse, Carlos shares that the infrastructure of the hotel is also starting to crumble. This What's hotel up, is pretty much collapsing. One thing that I saw was the maintenance request. And in, in these maintenance requests, it ranged from mold in the ceilings to mold in the walls to power outages in 10 rooms and one floor. Bruh. The electrical infrastructure Bruh. in this hotel is fried. Bruh. Uh, we have everything from power outages to fires going off. The lobby Bruh. ceiling, we've had that fall. They are completely destroying somebody's hotel. Who in the hell owned this hotel, bruh? <laughs> Who owned this hotel? This guy is scripted. What does that mean? What, is, what does that mean? This guy is scripted. Puff, puff, I need something from that. What, what does that mean? It's been flat out said by every agency in that hotel that they're just waiting for it to, to collapse. But the city does not want to start the process of getting them out because it's 5,000 people. Okay, Puff Puff said he's told to say this. So are you saying that he's told to say this, meaning that he's lying or that this stuff is not really happening? I want to know that part. So it's either going to start a riot or during the riot, it's going to collapse the hotel because they don't want to leave the hotel. They love the location. Who wouldn't love, you know, living free next to Times Square? A lot of the migrants told me they, they could see the ball drop from their window.
The media has been reporting that one of the main reasons that migrants are overwhelming progressive cities is due to Republican governors such as Texas Governor Greg Abbott busing migrants into these cities. However, when asked if the migrants are happy to be in New York or if they even want to leave, this is what Carlos had to say. If they want to leave the city of New York, they're given a bus ticket, a train ticket, a plane ticket in that very moment. And who gives them that? The city of New York. Is, is paying for it, and we are giving them that. They get tired of New York City, they move on to the next city, Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington. They're, they're, they're traveling around. Would you say that the majority of them want to stay in New York, or are they trying to go somewhere else? So they come to New York wanting to go somewhere else, but at the same time, they see everything that's being given to them and that they're in right next to Times <coughs> Square. So they decide to stay and they don't want to leave. And their mindset is that this hotel situations are never going to close. And the city does nothing to tell them, hey, eventually the money runs out. When the money runs out, these hotels will close. Carlos has worked in U.S. Immigration Services for the past five years, and he's the same whistleblower who came forward last year when he was working for MVM Inc. and realized that migrant children were being handed off to unvetted adults throughout the U.S. And that's how Sav found her. That, that's how Savannah found him. He was already a whistleblower. He seen it all. He was paying attention to it all. He was pissed off about it all. He was so close helping these individuals out and still being assaulted by them at the same time. And he has some gripes. He's telling us the truth, period. He's putting it out there. If it weren't for him or someone else that's on the inside telling us exactly what's going on, we wouldn't know. But the videos and the pictures that actually shows what's going on. Are there loving adults there taking care of their kids absolutely are there people in there who actually clean up behind themselves absolutely are there people in there who in their heart of hearts want to do the best i mean do right by america so that they can become american citizens absolutely all it takes though is a small percentage of them to completely f up everything and as we're clearly seeing in that hotel they are destroying the rooms. They are destroying their electricity. They are, extro um, they are starting fires. They are starting fights. They are getting kids drunk. They are doing all types of sugar honey iced tea inside of those hotels. That's criminal. And they cannot face any charges. Whenever something happens to them, they're beating the hell out of their women. They get reported. They go to a day going to um, a hotel and they come right back. I mean, they go to a hospital and they come right back. They get a swift talking to and then they come right back. That's what's happening in this country. We are free for all. That doesn't set a precedent. It don't. It makes us look weak. It makes us look like anything. And that's exactly what we look like to other people, to other countries right now. He has also worked as a contractor under organizations such as Customs and Border Patrol and the Office of Refugee Resettlement. However, despite being in the industry for so long, he shares that this is one of the worst situations he's ever seen. I've never seen a situation as bad as this one, which is why I'm coming out. I'm not doing this anonymous, anonymously anymore. I'm attaching my name, my face to this, because it's that bad. I've been doing this for five years, and in my five years, this has been the worst experience by far. The city of New York does not know what they're doing, and it's only gonna get worse from here. Talk to the viewers as well about what coming forward with this type of story means for you. It's years of relationships, friendships that are gonna be gone the minute this airs, but it's all worth it if I could do some kind of good. And that good is exposing how horrible the situation is in New York City regarding the migrants in June at the Royal Hotel. The city of New York should be ashamed of themselves for what they did. And this was a terrible decision to make, was this hotel. For the most part, there's no, there's no pressure, no rush, no, no urgency of fixing the situation. It's just keep paying for their hotel rooms, keep paying, keep paying for their food and hoping the situation fixes itself, but it's not going to fix itself. When the day comes that they tell them either you, you have to move to a new location, this, this site is gonna close, the migrants are not gonna understand. So there's no way to go about it. Everybody who's in that 30. hotel is in this chat group. So the minute you try to move, not just one floor, the minute you try to move one room 
they're going to put it in the chat and the word's going to spread through the whole hotel and they're not going to go quietly they're not going to go calmly peacefully the city of new york does not know how to handle any of this i think they're just kind of hoping it goes away mm-hmm. they they think it's going to somehow get better and it's not getting better first of all i want to say shout out to savannah hernandez for covering this story um i think it was amazing and someone pointed out the fact that he is scripted. He's saying exactly what he is being told to say. That's cool, too. Um, this is how I look at this. Whether he's scripted or not, it's common sense what's happening. If you don't see what's happening, you are deaf, dumb, and blind, which is okay, too. Just try not to stay deaf, dumb, and blind. Try to learn some things that's going to get you out of your current situation because, obviously, you don't see a damn thing that's happening in front of you. And if that's happening with this situation, then that won't be the only situation that you will be deaf, dumb, and blind in. It will become who you are, all right? At this point, we don't want that to happen to you. We want you to walk away from being deaf, dumb, and blind. We want you to understand that what's being presented right now has some truth to it. Whether it was scripted or not, you can see for yourself what's happening in New York. This is happening wherever. I want y'all to think about this. This is the big part. This is happening wherever there's been an influx of illegal immigrants, Texas, Chicago, D.C., New York, list goes on and on and on and on. It's happening in these places. For the simple fact that these politicians are trying to position themselves to be able to have all of the voters they can possibly have that will support them. I'm just thankful that I don't live in New York, but I fear for the people who do. Matter of fact, I don't. I don't. Because a lot of them New Yorkers voted for it. And so the stuff that you're dealing with, um, of course, everybody before they're, when they're asked about this, the first thing that they're going to say is, well, I love all people, first of all, and I want the best for all of these families. I love everybody in the the world because it's the right thing to say. You know what I mean? It's the right thing to say. But then they'll go, but I don't like what I'm seeing. It seems like it's becoming overwhelming. Obviously, it's becoming overwhelming. Most people are struggling to take care of their own families. Imagine adding one more person to your family. Imagine adding two. Imagine adding three, four, five, six thousands. It's going to get worse. And you had a president who wanted to get in front of this. But because we were so pig-headed and buying every single thing that was sold to us on mainstream media, we got rid of that idea of protecting the border. And now look at us. This dude said, I've been working here for five years and now this is the worst it's ever been. Obviously, next year is going to be worse. The year after that is going to be worse until someone takes some action. If no one takes any action, it's going to continue to get worse. 